Hi everybody. I am in the process of designing a new felting kit and I thought I may as well do it at the same time as I'm videoing it and then people will have something to watch. So as with my other one that I've gotten out which is a, a valley and fields and sheep this one's going to be a sunset and I've left a key here. So it's a small picture of the same picture that's below and that is going to be like a template which we can use or you can make something up it doesn't matter but this just shows you what it is and that will be going on there and i have a little bag of goodies let's open it up and see what i've got to say there now i do have some interesting threads. Let's have a look at them first. See how they pull apart. It's beautiful. It's a coppery colour. Alright, so that's that. We've got some grassy kind of threads. We've got a piece of hand dyed linen that we'll use. And we've got these little different bits of all different kinds of colours. And it doesn't look like much, but I think we can create something with that. And that's what we're going to try right now. So let's start. I'm going to push all that to one side so I can see it where I, when I want it. So this is going to be just an approximation of the design. It doesn't have to be that. You can do your own thing. Um, so how would we do it? Well, I think I'd be inclined to... Take these basic shapes. Right, so that's the bottom. I am going to use just a pencil. Doesn't matter if we go outside that edge there, but it gives you an idea. You can basically see. And the other one. Well, I could just go like this. So I would just continue on cutting these pieces out separately, adding one at a time until I have the template onto the felt. Here we are. So I've gotten something. I am, um, I've got this. I'm going to divide it up first. I, I might just divide it into a few pieces. Divide it right into two or three. Um, because, although it looks tiny, I'm going to do this to it. And it just sort of breaks it up a bit and almost makes a cloud shape as it is. And I'm going to pop it down, maybe, maybe there be the gap in between those two clouds a little bit we'll be going over it again with other um, threads so you won't see all of it but you will see some so where do I want you maybe right up the top yeah already I'm not paying a great deal of attention to my lines but I still know that I want you know to pop a horizon in and it's wise hmm, to sort of think about it beforehand. Yeah, we'll work it out. Okay, so we've got something like that. I'm going to fray that out a little bit more. There we go. Now, felting needle, that will be included in the kit with the handle here. And that won't really go in, although it may just tack. Maybe we can just use it to have a bit of a tack. You'll be given a proper sponge, or you can do what I do and just use an ordinary piece of sponge. Right, so that's, that's something I'm aiming to put in there. There. And what else? Well, I get the feeling we're going to want some some dark at the top. 
like that. Oh, we had those clouds, didn't we? Well, I want some, let's, let's pop a tiny, tiny bit in first to say. And the reason we've got fawn, well, the beigey kind of fawn colour here for the background is because we'll allow bits of it to show. We don't have to feel we have to cover the lot. We're just doing this and building it up. In some places you'll see it, in some places you won't. Um, like I was saying about the key, if I wanted to make sure that I'm doing it the same way I had planned, then I would look at that, but I'm not overly bothered. But I, um, not that, sorry, where's the top bit? Oh, here we go, there's our plan. So. But mainly, I just wanted to have some clouds coming in. And can you see how I'm using it? Very sparingly. And I'm putting a very slight veneer over that um, fabric, which is the linen. So if you haven't seen one of my videos before on needle felting, the important thing is that it goes in and out the same way. All you're doing is stabbing those fibres through the background, which in this case is a piece of acrylic felt. And it doesn't matter if I go that way or that way or that way, as long as when I come out, I go the same way I went in. If I didn't and I turned it before I pulled it out, I'd snap this little fragile needle. You don't want that happening early on. You don't want it happening at all. So I'm going to make it a little bit lighter down here and just pop in some of this this is a really creative craft can you see that you're just blending colors it's like painting just exactly like painting only you're not getting messy Right, we've got this luscious orange and I think that we need to cover up some of that with it. Look at that. Mwah. Now I haven't totally used anything yet because I'm still making it up. Um, so I'm just taking the tiniest little slithers. Sorry, I bumped your camera there. And I could easily put something over top of those and blend them in even better. Put too much on, just pull it off. Now I've got a cloud. I'm wanting a cloud coming in like this. I need some darker colour there, really, don't I? But Maybe not so much attention up to this bit. I'll mark in where I want this um, this headland, this whatever it is, hill. If I start to get an idea then of what I what I'm building. If I just tease it gently, I can make it go where I want, which is lovely. Use some of that to hold that down. So when you have something that's difficult to um, put in there, uh, you know, adhere to the, to the felt, then you can just trap it down with a small amount of roving. Uh, at some stage, yeah, maybe I'll use a little tiny bit of this yellow to to create my sort of where I wanted it. Where did I want this little sun that's setting and creating this all these beautiful hues? That would do me, I think. Tiny bit 
tiniest little skerricks. Use some of it over top of the yellow that we put so to blend it and make it more in the center. Now these kits are going to also come with embroidery thread so you can change things up with that a little bit. If you feel like, oh no, I wish the sun had more something, then you can do it. Now you can do this as well. Look at this, isn't this great? You can shape something and give it a jab and make it be what you want. Hmm. Good enough start. Let's grab some luscious red. Mm -mm. Now, where do I want it? Out there, okay. I think you can see why I used that colour in the background because it has nice tones to help blend all of this. Maybe I'll decide a little bit more about what I want here in the, in the bottom. Ah, I'm going to grab out these and you will see why I've chosen them. Okay. We'll grab that lovely copper shiny yarn. Pull it apart a bit and I'm going to use it Something like that. Can you see what I'm aiming at? It is, it's just adding so much texture for a star. I'm going to spread it as I go. So I need to like take a little bit up there, pull that out there. I'm going to put that up there. this one and I seem to remember we had two lines here didn't we that we were trying to bring in we're bringing in this this headland here that was one then we have another patch there of something and then we had this other it's not a headland what is it an island a hill something so I'm going to use this one to go there I'm going to use this to mark that I could even cut this in half Oops, I'll do two patches of it. Now, what I'm wanting to do is to show that it's this. So I like playing with different fibres and to see how I can use them you know, quite unusually sometimes. But that's um, and it's just finding another use for something, isn't it? This was meant for for knitting some jumper, but here it is. I'm creating something else entirely from it, and it could be a bush. I'm just going to pull that bit. So, oh, that worked well, didn't it? All right, so uh, that was the shape that we wanted, something like that. Try that again. See how we pull and it just unravels a wee bit more. Hmm. but it could also be here hmm I'm gonna try a bit there to start with now those things don't really want to felt in that well so sometimes I go just a tiny tiny bit 
over the top. Hmm. Now we did have some other bits and pieces. I've got lots more bits and pieces here to go. And I'll probably go until I've finished. But um, I just wanted to show you we got this. Which I thought was like grass. Um, there's a few different colours there. I'm going to cut it into three I think. And we'll just place it now. Where we might use it. There we go. Wouldn't that be nice? I don't like it, I just pull it off. It's, it's not permanent there. But we managed to sort of start to suggest some sort of grassy hill. And maybe this is a valley or maybe it's we're looking um out towards an inlet, oh, but that'd be a nice little inlet. It's the ocean. So this stuff here, oh, choices. I'll use a little bit of it there because that's. I do want to trap those over. carefully at what I've got left I want to make sure that I leave myself some darker colors those are dark I've got over here I've got some lemons and other lighter colors I've got the bright red that I can pop in the sky which would be gorgeous so I need to sort of make sure I keep some for where I might want shadowy areas but I'm I'm really liking the idea of putting a bit more bit more of this white in here I really think the yellows are wanting to be up here more so And I've still got oodles left. And this is what I'm saying about using the tiniest little skerrick. You see how these ones have got the little crimped edges? I might use that one there. Because I did want something to start to go over that. I'll go over that sun. Let me use that. Here. Yeah. Tease it out so I get to use it for a fair distance. There. So I had this dark still that I was saving, and you know, I could use it the tiniest skerrick to sort of be underneath these brooding clouds. That would probably add a bit of drama. Or what? There we go. Might do that again. Hmm. And let me use a bit more on this. I want that to be a, a definite line. Geez, that in like that. And maybe we'll use the last of that little 
Garrick down here to echo that colour that's up there a little bit. Do you think? Or is it too much? Or would we prefer it up here? I'd save that until I know where I want to use it. So I'm going to go back to this. I've got loads of this. Peachy, yellowy. It is a lot of things. And I would like quite like to use it to just punch in some more of that sky punch in that's a good word for what we're doing punching in luscious kind of pink color rose color Yeah, why not? I think it's turned out quite well. I like it. I'm going to use this up here somehow to go around. But this will, everyone's picture is going to be individual. Keep it on the other side so it doesn't look silly. And if you thought, oh, I made a mistake there, you can either lift it up or go over it with something else. I like the idea that it changes as you as you want it to. It's gonna I do like to add something to go over that weed. Um the the grassy kind of yarn that we put in. And I just start with a little bit of that. So always keep track of what you've got left and where you might want to use it. For example, I've got this lovely lemon. Well, a lemon I would use as a highlight on the top of a cloud. Just like that. Really, that sky is looking quite nice. See how it's lovely blends of different colours, different layers. When you look at it like that, it really does look like a sunset. Now there's this. This is good the real kink, the natural kink of the sheep's wool. That makes a great cloud. And you can split it up. The more you divide it, it's still got the kink. It can be used. And as you can see, I keep little scary. So what's left? What can I use? Down the bottom, I mainly want the darker colours. But, can you see now, I'm taking that last little bit of purple and I'm rolling some balls. There we go. And I'm going to highlight them with a little bit of the lighter colour I have left. Or maybe some of the red. Just to mix it up a bit. But I'm just trying to make some little patches that are suggestive of rocks yellow in the sky there just using up my last little bit and I've kept that white creamy color in the center there really it's still up, you know up in the air what it could be but I like it like that now see here I'm just taking a tiny tiniest little bit of that creamy colour and I'm going around the top of the rock and that allowed it to show up and I could be a highlight on the top where the sun was catching it. But now it's time for some stitching so the kit comes with some embroidery threads that match and I have taken two strands and I am just starting with doing some running stitch and I will continue 
to just go backwards and forwards along some of the lines that are already there that I want to accentuate. So maybe on the horizon, maybe some clouds, maybe just some different areas. So I will do running stitch, but I will also do a few other things like here, for example, is where I have, you know, this grassy area and I'm just going to do some long stitch kind of random stitches to look like grasses. And that works well, I think. So it just depends on where you are, the stitch you might want to do. Just keep it simple. Running stitch, long stitch, seed stitch, fly stitch or French knots. That's about it. So all of those things are in the kit or you can check out my other videos that will show you how to do these simple stitches that I find very effective. What I'm doing now is a little bit of seed stitch that just sort of pops out into the background and allows that rock to show up a little bit better. Up here I'm starting to do some fly stitch. I use this stitch a lot. It can be so many things and here it's being some grasses or trees in the background. It can be so many things. It's so useful. It's just a little Y shape, so the needle comes up, you hold the thread out the way, you go down again into the right of it, and up again in a V shape underneath. And as you pull it up, it traps the thread and you leave a little tail when you put the thread down again. You'll be able to see videos about this on my channel and others to show you how to do it. Here we're using some French knots and can you see we're on the horizon line and I'm trying to you know make make that look like it's distant trees but you can see well against that setting sun and here I thought okay how about a tree so this is this is the fly stitch I was talking about and see how well that works as sort of a silhouette of a, of a tree. So I'll just continue on little bits and pieces here and there. I'll use just those simple stitches. Yeah, some more fly stitch in the center there really made that look like a bushy area. I decided I wanted the the bright sun to show up a little bit more so I used a little bit of white um, just a few stitches around the edge of that to help it show up there's that horizon that I wanted to show as well so maybe I'll be doing that or I'll try and um, you know, add some texture to these clouds so when I see a line that I really like, I might pull it out, like here's some orange that I'm using, French knots in little bunches, and then maybe some running stitch to just go a little bit further along, and maybe I'll do a little bit more running stitch, and just continue on like that. Really, it's just adding that fluffy textural kind of affair to the to the clouds. Sometimes I want to just blend an area in, so that's when I was using that lovely seed stitch. But here, this is sort of very moody, isn't it? And I'm sort of thinking I like this fly stitch creating these dead branches of trees kind of thing in the, in the background. So we're doing that. And really, I just keep going until I'm finished. Adding in a little more detail where I want it. If you add some French knots on the tops of those little fly stitches, it'll look like little seed heads. And you see how that's worked with just very little. We've managed to suggest you know, some detail. 
few French knots up there in those clouds you know, gave it that flushy, fluffy kind of uh, silver lining. It looks pretty good. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you would like to buy the kit and to do it yourself, you can follow the links below to my Etsy shop. So thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do press like and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more videos. Thank you.